morning, FMEUC 2017. Yeah, good morning. My name is Dale Lutz. And my name's Don Murray. And we're delighted to have you joining us this week to explore the world of data. That's right. The, the, the video you just saw was all about technology, showing how technology has changed our lives and has really worked to form the world that we live in. Certainly the world of my generation. And this week, we're going to be exploring how a new thing is shaping the world of the next generation. That's right. So technology moving forward is going to play an ever-increasing role as we strive to use all the data that's being collected from the technology to help us with the difficult decisions that we all have ahead. So, Don, location matters. That's right. That's right. More and more, it doesn't matter where we are in the Earth, we can get readings from, from the, that location from on the ground all the way up into space to help us understand what's going on. And so there's nowhere on the Earth that we don't know where it is, what's happening, and how it's changing. Yeah, GPS devices are everywhere. We have them on our wrists. We have them in our pockets. We have them in our cars. Um, they're being used uh, on animals to track an on endangered species to identify where they are so we can protect them from poachers. Um, and actually, we even have customers that are putting GPS devices on snow plows so they can figure out where the roads are getting cleared. That's right. They also are putting them on trains so they can track not only where the trains are, but also the, tel the telemetry data so they can see the condition of the, the train so engine so that they can run their infrastructure more efficiently. 3D modeling is increasingly becoming a real thing that affects the real world. So not only are physical things being created as a result, uh, we have, for example, the city of Oslo. Is that our health city? Yep, it's Oslo. 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 It's right. Oslo, yep. Uh, one, one of those great cities. That's uh, right. Printed a 3D model of their whole city <laughs> to have in the hall so anyone can see what is actually there. And that's a real physical manifestation, but the 3D modeling is also becoming very important in the worlds of both augmented and virtual reality. And in fact, during this conference, you're going to get a chance to play around with some of that early technology as well in our exciting contest. That's right. And people are using FME with 3D modeling to um, model um, campuses for space planning, also doing 3D routing across campuses. And uh, yeah, you can even, if you go to the Open Bionics site, you can download 3D models and print out a Star Wars hand or an Iron Man hand or a Frozen hand. I'm not into the Frozen hand, but the Star Wars hand would be cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, sensors. Sensors are absolutely everywhere. We have satellite sensors. We have LiDAR all over, all over in cars. We have um, just sensors everywhere. And again, it's helping us understand what's going on. Yeah. And we, we, speaking of this conference, um, there's a couple talks on UAVs that talk about how you can use FME to plan UAV missions, but also then process the data. So those are two, um, just two interesting talks on sensors today. And speaking of satellites, there's never been a time when the Earth has been as observed as it is today. One of the sponsors of our conference is Planet out of San Francisco, and they now have the largest satellite fleet by, owned by anybody, with more than 140 satellites up there taking pictures. Very shortly, they will be imaging the entire Earth every single day, creating an unimaginable treasure trove of data. And if that's not all, downstairs, right below us, there's the office of a Canadian company called Earthcast, and soon they will be having continuous coverage of the Earth using radar. So even when it's cloudy for those nine months in Vancouver, they'll be able to figure out what's <laughs> happening down here. That's right. And that's totally a game changer. Um, remote sensing in the past, is, as you've been, you've been getting it every month or every year, and you can, you can see what happened. But daily is a game changer. Now we'll be able to catch people who are doing illegal deforestation, for example. Right now we find out after they're done. Now we'll be able to catch them while they're doing it. Um, disasters, we'll be able to measure on a daily basis, how are disasters? Um, plants, you'll be able to check the health of plants on, a, on a, 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 a schedule you've never been able to do before. Yep. Yeah, The Economist, it was kind of funny. The Economist, I subscribed to The Economist, and in May, the, the edition came, the digital one, of course, came, and it was about the world's most valuable resource. It's no longer oil. It is now data. And so people ask me what I do at, at SAFE, and I've explained it to a few people, and I remember one guy said to me, you have no idea what you do. So anyway, but with this metaphor, now I know what I do. OK, so if we look at oil, if you think about oil, you got raw oil, you pull out of the ground. It in itself is no value. You have to get it to an oil refinery. The oil refinery takes that oil and makes a number of products. It makes fuel for everything, plastics. 
um, fertilizers, virtually everything that we use, some component of it comes from oil. And so what do you need to move all that oil? Pipe, right? We talk about the Keystone Pipeline, there's pipes all over Canada, and pipe is the way, the preferred way to move oil. Now if we look at data, it's exactly the same thing. We got raw data coming from all these sensors, we got raw data coming from social media, from Internet of Things, little bits. Ask me about my little bits later. And, um, and again, we got these big companies, they're, they're refining this data, like Amazon, like Azure, IBM Bluemix, um, producing products. These products are exposed as web services, and so then you... Um, when you're building all these amazing apps, solving all these problems, you have to consume these products. And, and we, we make it as easy as you. Again, you need pipe. Yeah, Don, and what's a great thing for pipe? For data? Yes, FME. FME. Yeah, FME. Right. And so really what we're telling all of you is that actually you are all the pipe fitters of the world. That's uh, right. You That's are the right. ones connecting all these things and driving this new economy of the 21st century. And so we're so honored to have you all here sharing this time with us and using our products to produce these amazing outcomes. Absolutely. So we're really excited. So now I know what I do, so I'm really excited about that. And really behind all of this is the fact that data transformation is the key to driving the decisions that we need to be making for this complicated world we live in. Absolutely. And it's the transformation that's key to, to helping us understand. And when we understand things, we can make better decisions. It's really the case that this data transformation is shaping the world that we live in in this 21st century. That's right. And that brings us all the way back to the theme of this conference, which is about shaping our world with data. And through this, we're going to just hear about all the amazing things that you're doing with our tool and with data to shape and understand the world. So really, thank all of you for inspiring us. You know, Don and I began this quite some time ago, and from the very beginning, it was our customers that, that energized us, gave us hints, told us what we should be doing. We've listened, and we're so glad to have you along this journey. I'm looking here at one of my very first customers, Robert, in the front row. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were there back in 96, and it's so wonderful having you here almost 21 years later. Um, but all of you, new or old, have really shaped the company and our products. Yeah. Yeah, and as Dale says, it began way back in 1993. We're the two guys who created the first FME desktop. Not much has changed, actually, Don. No, 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 no. We My still, hair's the same. My and, hair's the same. And, you know, really, our marketing effort is almost the same. Yeah, this screen yeah, is almost yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, you and I made that, that uh, trade show booth all by ourselves, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We yeah. spared no expense. Absolutely. Absolutely. But since the very beginning, when we started, we knew that there was a problem in terms of connecting where data is to where data needed to be. In the very beginning, we were helping forest companies here in BC share yeah. information to and from the province so that they could better manage this important resource in our province. That's right, so we continually add more connections. But more importantly is the transformation engine. We have an amazing team at SAFE who just toils endlessly ensuring that you get more transformations than ever before. The transformations are better, they're more robust, they can deal with bad data better. They can deal with XML. Yeah. And, um, don't get them started. Yeah, don't get me get started in XML. We, we have to get Chris on the stage yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But transformation <laughs> is the key. Just connecting to data is not enough. You need to be able to get it the way you want it. Yes. And then lastly, after you've done all that, you need a way that that data moves while you're in bed sleeping. The, the automation of data movement is a key ingredient to this whole piece. That's right. So you can set a schedule or have it all run based on some event that triggers the operation. So that's really where the power begins. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So for those that aren't aware, we really manifest ourselves in three different products. We began years and years ago on the desktop, and that's still where the FME experience begins. That's yeah. where you explore the data that you have, you create and craft the transformation as you get it from A to B, and you get that all perfected and running. Yep. And then once you have it on desktop, you can deploy it to server. Now with the, those workflows are available across the enterprise, and then you can use <clears throat> the automation capabilities of FME to take your workflows to the next level. And while data may not have <coughs> mass, it does have gravity. Yeah. And that's why we have an option to use our products up in the cloud, where all this remote sensing data, for example, the petabytes, yeah. is there a yeah. bigger word than that? I don't know. Yeah, there is zettabytes. Zettabytes yeah. of yeah. all this yeah. stuff that's being yeah. created. <laughs> that's not sitting on your IBM PC on yeah. your desktop. So we have an option for you to move that up, <coughs> paid by the hour, and actually scale it 
to cloud scale. Absolutely. And really, things that the cloud enables us to do are things that we could just never do before. There's no way we'd be collecting imagery of the entire planet every yeah. single day and making it affordable without the cloud. So yeah. the cloud's the future, and we're really excited to be there. So all of these things and all of your input has shaped FME over the years. Yeah, yeah. so there's a number of things that go into helping us shape FME 2017 and shape the FME of the future. So, for example, a gathering like this. Now, that picture on the top left is those poor folks that were here in 2014, and they actually had umbrellas. Yep. Uh, but uh, I don't think we're going to need those this week. But yep. this user conference actually does provide a spectacular chance for our staff to interact with all of you. They'll be hanging out in the doctor's office and all over the place. Please tell them what you do with our product. Tell them how we can do better. It's a key ingredient to making FME the greatest it can be. That's right. And, and this is just the beginning. So when you go home, when you're using FME and you have ideas, please go on the Knowledge Center. Vote on other people's ideas. Tell us your ideas. We really do read all those. Every time we talk about the next release, we look at these ideas because we recognize that the great ideas come from many places. They don't just come from us. They come from all of you, the practitioners, the, pipe, the data pipe fitters who are working to somehow get crazy data to flow from one place to another. And then lastly, we have the, the world tour that we go around and right. we see all of you wherever you are. And all of that feeds back into us at SAFE and allows us to innovate. Yeah. Whether it's stuff like this with the HoloLens, yeah. or long ago you told us to do LiDAR, even longer ago you told us to do rasters, um, yep. And then more recently, that we need to do web services. These things come from our interactions with all of you. And so that's why we value all of you so much and look forward to this week of exchange of ideas and suggestions with you. Yep. At SAFE, we're big on innovation. Um, once a year, we, have a, we give the staff the week off to basically do whatever they want. And, uh, and it's crazy the things they build. They play with VR, they play with AR, they play with talking to Alexis, they play with little bits, they play with... Lego all, Mindstorms. Lego Mindstorms. They do crazy things with XML that you're gonna, you'll see a little bit later, yes. as, uh, and, um, which is very exciting. And, um, and so because we recognize that we have this amazing team of super smart, super passionate people, and we don't for a second think that they don't have some of the great ideas that we're gonna build on. Yep. Yep. So. so one of the things that we heard from all of you many, many times is that using FME for only eight hours a day at work just isn't enough. Yeah. It, it just isn't enough. And some of you said, I never go home to my family because I just want to play and do more things. And so we stand for, we're a family-oriented company, and so we don't want that to happen. So Don, what are we going to do about it? We're going to introduce the free FME home license. So if you have a license at work and you want to do extra work, but you would like to be home close to your family, maybe you also want to have an FME night, you know, have your wife work on things, have your, your partner, your children. Play with XML. Uh, yeah. Instead of binge watching TV or Netflix, you can get FME. Actually, okay. uh, I should tell, there's a, a great game that our Suico friends have that you run an FME workspace and it generates one with, with a handful of transformers, and then you have to try to solve what that could do. Oh, wow. So there I you go. Yeah. There's a fun party game. That's right. You hope you get the Python caller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, not only yeah. though, this, uh, this home license of, it is for people that have FME at work and want to experiment and play at home, but it also is for hobbyists yeah. and for yeah. researchers for those working in humanitarian work, That's anything right. not for profit. Yep, yep. We, we want to give away more FME. Absolutely. So if you think you have a good idea, I know I, I think I have a lot of good ideas, and often many hours later I re realize they weren't such a good idea. But if you have an idea, you just want to play with FME, you want to try FME, you want to build a proof of concept, you want to do anything that's not considered commercial or production, get FME, download it, install it, go crazy. The price is right. Yeah. It's 100% free. Um, yeah, so you'll find that on our website. And so okay. some might ask, what about FME server? What if I want to play with that? Well, there, there's already a couple of ways you could, but now we have a very friction-free way, yep. the instant FME server trial. That's right. It, we recognize that many of you can't install FME server on your, on your machines. Um, we also recognize that the way to, with FME cloud right now is, you know, we give you free credits, but often they run out and we want more. So what we've done is we've set up a, an FME uh, cloud instance. You log on, and under a minute, you have a full license on that uh, server machine, and you can go crazy, knock yourselves out, build proof of concepts, pilots, whatever you want. And uh, now you have a really easy way to play, learn about FME server. So we're excited about that too. So on the nonprofit side, we've given away software all over the world to yep. universities, to humanitarian aid organizations. Yep. 
Um, and to people with good ideas. To people with good ideas. Yep. So we're very, very pleased with, with the results that have come from that. And that, yep. at the end of the day, when Don and I go home at night, it feels great to know that our efforts are making a difference. The efforts that you, do, you pour in make a difference as well. And so yeah. that, that, at the end of the day, uh, I, I think really makes it all worthwhile. And that's really, and that's really what it's all about. So we really, want, we really want to promote the grant program. We really want to grow it. We want it to be much bigger than it is now. Last year, we gave away about $12 million worth of software. In three years, we'd like that to be $50 million or more. So if you know of an institution, if you know of somebody doing research, if you know of somebody who's, who's you know, got some great ideas, just tell them about the grant program, the home yeah. license, and then let's really, really get those up so anybody who can use FME um, has access to it. Because at the end of the day, Data transformation is the key to decision making. Informed decision making has never been more important in our world than it is today. That's right. And our guest speaker today um, knows more about the importance of data when it comes to uh, making key decisions than our guest speaker. Yeah, no one else knows more. That's right, Colonel. And so let's hand it over to him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.